Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am going to demonstrate how I use my Singer knitting machine to make pre-knit blanks. Um, these are long tubes of knit fabric that I use to dye and then unravel to knit a different project with. I am not demonstrating how to make, you know, a finished scarf or something on this Singer machine. Um, there will be mistakes and dropped stitches that ultimately I do not care a lot about because I want to be able to dye really cool colorways. You should check out some other videos on this channel about the really fun things you can get when you dye pre-knit blanks. Today I am going to be making the blank out of worsted weight yarn. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool and there are, let's see, there are 220 yards total. Now, I have used this machine with fingering weight yarn, which I believe had over 400 yards, and it got a little painful. Um, this is not the easiest thing to use um, because you would want to, to go and crank it really, really fast, but then you end up getting stuck. Um, so the other things that you'll need are you'll need a yarn needle, which came with the Singer sewing machine. Um, I'm not sure if this is the one that came with it, but you'll also want to have a crochet hook because inevitably what will happen is you'll end up with multiple strands of yarn wrapped around one of these hooks and you'll fix it with like a quick crochet sheet and attach it. It'll leave like this ugly s scar on the blank, but when it comes to dyeing the yarn, it won't make a lot of difference. Um, where it would make a big difference, it would be really frustrating to fix is if you were actually wanting to use what you made out of a scarf. Before I start winding the yarn, I just want to point out this button right here. Now we are going to want to make a tube. So you see how with it set to the circle, this goes around continuously. If I set it to the square, you'll be able to go in one direction and then it won't go anymore. It'll hit a stop. And then you would go back in the other direction until it stops. So the square setting would be if you were going to try to make something flat. But that is not what we want to do today. I am now going to show you how to cast on to this Singer knitting machine in a way that your edge will not unravel. Now if you were to just insert the yarn and start cranking, you would get a stitch on every single hook at this beginning junction. And while like that's the way you'll want to go in the end, if you only attach yarn to every other hook along here, then the edge that you start with will not unravel accidentally, which you know is what we want. Now, because of the mistakes and stuff that happen, you do want to make sure that you do not unravel your dyed blank from this cast on edge because you'll then, when you hit a snag, you'll have a lot of trouble unraveling this. In case you can't tell, I may have learned this the hard way. So I recommend doing something like putting a tiny knot that you could then undo, um, like after you've dyed the yarn, but a tiny knot at the beginning of your yarn. So that way you know, hey, don't start unraveling from this end. So anyway, now we're going to cast on. So you see that I have threaded my yarn needle and you're going to insert the yarn needle through this hole right here and pull through. And you can, you know, oops, get in a slightly better position. You can thread your first hook let your tail hang. Now this is really loose tension right here and you're going to need more tension from when you're winding. Um, and so to increase the tension there is this tension bar right here and you can wind the yarn through it. Which is starting at the bottom. Now because my yarn is on a swift I will not need the maximum amount of tension shown here, but you'll see that um, when you go and you'll have to figure out what works. 
best for you. Um, I think that I ended up only needing one, but we will see. All right, so now that we've threaded, we've thre <laughs> threaded the machine, now we can start. So I'm gonna start winding and let that first stitch be caught and then skip that second stitch. Let a stitch be caught and skip the next stitch. And you can actually use your crochet hook to help you skip the stitch. And I'm going very slow. This is probably about the speed that I would cast on if I wasn't trying to, oops, not quite far enough, trying to skip stitches, but hopefully you get the idea. So as I said before, we're casting on to every other hook so we get an edge that does not unravel. I'm not sure if I even still have the manual for this machine, um, but I believe that this is what was recommended. All right, so now we have gone one complete circle and we are ready to start knitting. <laughs> um, but you can see that just from the swift, I have a really good amount of tension. But when using a ball of yarn, um, I needed to have more tension, so I needed to insert the yarn through more of these circles right there. Now, eventually, I will not want to keep cranking on the stool. Um, but unfortunately, there's not really a good angle to do this. Because the machine does have pegs at the bottom, and there's also pegs down here. But when you have it here, this handle, and if you hold it, oh, I don't, maybe you can't see, because I think I was zoomed in. Okay. Well, if you hold it by the handle and crank sideways like shown, this actually is not very comfortable and puts a lot of tension on your wrist. So I prefer to leave it flat as long as possible and even have it over the edge of something. Um, but as you can see, we're getting nice knit fabric that's coming out the middle and no mistakes or anything so far. Um, you'll notice that the, you're seeing the wrong side in the center. And yeah, I think I am going to keep uh, knitting and come back and show you once we've hit a snag. So a bit of a funny angle, but I just wanted to show you how I most comfortably crank and give you a sense of the speed at which I crank. Um, I'm holding the side against my body. Um, so my body is right here. These are my legs. Um, I'm pressing it against my body and then cranking it with my hand. And doing this allows the yarn twist to hang free. Now eventually, because these tubes are so narrow, it'll hit the floor and then you'll start getting like twists that come back up and you'll want to relieve that tension. Uh, but for now, you know, I can just crank and knit away. So, so far I have had no catches, so I'm not able to show you how to fix that yet, but there is a mistake that I just wanted to point out. So here it looks like we skipped a stitch across um, and so there is you see this long stitch compared to the two short ones in the grand scheme of things for dyeing this makes no big deal at all but if you were using this to say make a scarf it's something that to a more experienced knitter might drive you a little bit crazy so I just wanted to point out that you can get an error and then notice it you know when you're pretty far down and that could be annoying. I just want to point out a few other mistakes in the fabric that you can get. And again, these aren't something that I have any desire to try to fix. 
yeah, going backwards is a little irritating. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, but again, these make no difference for the diability of our wondrous blank. So this is also turning into a why this is not a good knitting machine review. So I've been going for a while and the back side started getting really twisted. Um, this happened from me using it on its side and cranking this way and the back side got really twisted, twisted up um, because it got caught in something. So you can see, can you see the back? Yeah. You can see as I twist, the back side starts twisting more and more, you know. Which, again, since I'm just going to dye this, isn't a huge deal. But it's something that it's not the most fun to have to keep undoing that. All right, we are nearing the end. So I'm going to slow down. Um, I think I've been cranking, including with the breaks for filming, between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, and I never got the one mistake that I wanted to show you um, how to fix, but effectively sometimes the stitch won't come off of the hook sufficiently and so then you'll end up with many stitches trapped on one hook and what you can do is kind of backtrack to that and use your crochet hook to kind of you want to end up with just getting one strand back on the hook so you can kind of end up by say like if there's four strands on it you can crochet them all together um, and leave it on the hook and it looks like some of the other mistakes that happen naturally. Um, but this was actually a pretty good cycle for this machine. Um, and so now you see we've got a little bit of yarn left and we'll just keep cranking until the yarn's all gone and then keep cranking around again. And okay, we did not completely remove all of it. Um, we'll try holding it this way. For the handle. It's supposed to release them, but it is not wanting to. All right. So we are going to have to use our crochet hook after all. Um, I mean, in the past when I've done this, this is not where I've had the trouble. Um, because usually they'll just like slip, they'll just slip off in the end. Uh, but this is not a very predictable instrument. And is why it's something that I'm not a huge fan of for if you're actually trying to knit something. But we can see, I'm just, because the way these hooks are made to try to keep the yarn on, it can be kind of a pain to remove. Hmm. All right. Okay, so we've got this mess of live stitches. Now you can either, using your crochet hook, try to bind off um, in the conventional way, or let's see. Let me just unravel a bit. Or you can take your yarn needle and slip through the remaining stitches, like so. And you know, you're not gonna pull together or anything, you're just trying to keep it from unraveling. So I'm just taking this last end 
and weaving it through these jumble of stitches that dropped. Because again, I am going to be dying with this, not, you know, this is not a finished object that I have pride in. Let's see. This is super twisty. There we go. So this is secure. We should not drop any stitches. And I'll come back and show you what we got. Well, here we have it. A approximately six foot long knit tube with plenty of imperfections. Oh, here's a nice long imperfection that I guess the machine uh, fixed itself. That's something that I might have had to try to fix in the past. Um, and, you know, the cast off is way messier than normal because it did not just drop the stitches like I'm used to. But again, we're going to be dying with it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use the Singer knitting machine to create your own knit blank to use for dyeing. And I hope that if you are considering purchasing the Singer knitting machine to actually do knitting for you that maybe you'll reconsider um, and learn you know with just some needles and yarn. Um, I do think if I'm ever going to be involved in a yarn bombing project that I might use this um, because it would be faster than um, hand knitting tons and tons of stockinette. But overall the quality is not great it's kind of you get what you pay for and you know ultimately unless there's a really particular yarn that you want to dye in in your blank you know you if you just want to play around with dyeing a knit blank you might be better off paying the double price for bare yarn that's already in a blank of course you won't get to choose um, the fiber type and the weight um, which is why I bought the knitting machine in the first place but, you know, those are all just things to consider. For $30, this is more than paid for itself um, because I have not had to, you know, knit blanks by hand. But you would never see me, you know, cranking a lot out to sell the blanks or something this way because after, you know, nearly a half an hour of continuous cranking, my hands are very, very tired and I am ready to do something else. <laughs> so again, thank you for watching this tutorial. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I will be back soon with a dyeing tutorial, because I think we're gonna hand paint this blank that we just made.